They had me smoking weed like I'm a Rasta. I don't have to go to a pastor. I don't have to go to you. Peter, Peter, Peter. The anointing teaches me. Peter, Peter, sir, you're not anointed. Okay. You're not part of the anointed, right? The anointed or the chosen are the Israelites. We have been born again through Yahweh. No, Peter, stop talking while I'm talking. Right, but you don't understand. No, 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 no. I have to correct you like every Peter. Peter, I have to literally walk you through this, brother. You, you, first and foremost, let, let, let's, let's 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 stop playing games, right? I just muted you right now because you have no type of decorum or discipline or behavior, right? Yet you have the nerve to say that you have God's Holy Spirit or His anointing. First and foremost, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is a spirit of discipline, which you lack, sir. You don't even have the discipline to stop speaking while another man is speaking, especially a man trying to read the word of God in the Bible, which you claim to believe in. So I'm going to keep you on mute right now, all right, until I finish speaking because you you, you you act like a child, right? I have to put you in timeout real quick. So let's look at the word of God. A lion falling to his death like Mufasa. But then I got up, my spirit got roused up. And now I use these scriptures like a hundred round chopper. Now I use these scripts and I ain't talking about no pharmacy. Addicted to the law, ate the whole roll, not talking sushi. Yeah, I spit it raw, exposing flaws and ideologies. Christians want no smoke, I cut them up with no apologies. Fuck a Mac 11, this 1611 will give you a hundred Rounds. Everybody gather round as I put your favorite pastor six feet underground. This a funeral. I'm the undertaker in the mortician. Rehearse them righteous acts. Pray I make it past them auditions. Used to be up in them churches catching hella Z's. Now I'm on them corners pushing P. I'm talking we like I'm a roster. All right, all right. Shalom, family. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all glory. In all honor unto the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh, I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right, it's your brother Ariala here from Sakari, Philly. Um, back at you again, uh, getting ready to have a dialogue with uh, a man by the name of Peter, uh, a so-called Caucasian man. Uh, he was just here. Let me see where he's at. Forgive me, family. Yeah, so Peter, it's a so-called Caucasian man uh, who we would identify, who the Bible would identify as an Edomite. Um, and he, uh, you know, like all people, were in the comment section making claims about the Bible, which belongs to the Israelites. I'm going to make a conscious effort to continue to point that out, that the Bible belongs to the Israelites. Okay? The Israelites are the authors of the Bible. They are the ones who put pen to paper. Okay? Well, whether the Bible was translated by any particular nation of people, that's neither here nor there. However, the Bible itself, the scriptures, the text in which... um about 25% of this world uh, adheres to, so-called adheres to, all right, about a little over 2 billion people on this earth claim to be Christians and would therefore make up about a quarter of the world's population. All right, that book in which they so-called subscribe to belongs to the Israelites, belongs to the Jews and to the Israelites. So let's let's see where Peter is. Let's get Peter back into the studio and we can dive into uh, how God, the God of the Bible, feels about white people. Uh, because a little background, there was a video. Let me go ahead and share my screen. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so this video right here titled no the god of the bible doesn't hear the prayers of white people and um mr peter was in the comment section of course um making claims in regards to the book known as the bible which belongs to the israelites okay so 
we're going to dive into this conversation if he comes back. Let's see what Peter has to say. Looks like he emailed me back. Yeah, Peter is over here copping, please, here in the here in the email right now. So he, he he messages me, FaceTime me if you want to talk. I understand you have a channel. Dude, I'm not about to FaceTime you. I'm not about to allow you to have my personal phone number. Like, wh what are we talking about? So dude, click the link. Let's see if Mr. Uh, Mr. Peter comes back. Well, what we'll do is we will uh, we'll go into again the topic with or without him. Okay, how does the God of the Bible feel about white people, right? And of course, associated with that, well, does the God of the Bible hear? the prayers of white people. The first thing we would need to do is define what is a white person? What is a white person? Okay. Well, a so-called white person is not actually white. Okay. Um, let's look up. Let's take a look at your average white person, so-called white person, right? This guy right here, we can see the cigarette. We can see that this is white. We can see that the stars and the stripes on this American flag, they are white, right? His skin tone is not of these, not, not the same as these stars or the cigarette that's in his mouth, right? Right? Let's look at another one. Let's look at this guy. Right? This guy will be considered white. Well, we can look at the white stars and stripes in his background, and we can clearly see the difference between the stars and stripes in his skin tone. Right? So, so why did I do this? Right? To demonstrate that the so-called Caucasian who the Bible identifies as the Edomites, right? They are not white, right? They are not white. Okay, let's look up the etymology of the word white. Let me go ahead and pull up Adam online real quick. Here we go. So white. Bright. Radiant. Clear. Fair. Okay. Goes back to old high German. To shine. White. Honorable. Fair. Morally pure. Right. So this is what the word in white means. It says, as a surname, originally with reference to fair hair or complexion, it is one of the oldest in English, being well established before the conquest, meaning a meaning morally pure was in old English association with royalist causes it is late 18th century slang, sense of honorable fair, right? So the word white means pure, morally Morally pure, honorable, fair, right? To shine. Forgive me, I'm getting over a cold, right? I'm just traveling from Atlanta, uh, observing the Passover. 
and uh, had a great time through the spirit and power of Yahabash and Yahushai. But every time I travel, I always get got, right? But anyway, let's look at the people who are collectively called white. Oh, here's Peter. Hey, Peter, how's it going, man? What's up? How, how's your day going? Good. Awesome. So, uh, Peter, tell us a little bit. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Where you're from? Um, you know, what's your biblical lens? Things of that nature. Okay, so I am. I grew up LDS in the Mormon Church. Okay. And then went on a mission to Ghana. Okay. Fell away from the LDS Church. Mm -hmm. And then came into Christianity. Well, isn't LDS a, a denomination of Christianity? Um, so that's a whole other discussion. But I live with an LDS family, and we are constantly every day talking about this church and the Christianity. I mean, you guys aren't even the Christian church, right? Who's you guys? Like Black Israelites. Like you guys, well, you guys, right? Like you guys don't associate with the Christianity church. You're constantly dividing yourself from like the the traditional christian beliefs okay so so one we're not black right i'm wearing a black i'm wearing all black today right i'm right i'm literally wearing black right okay. my skin tone is not is nowhere near black right okay so we we, we call ourselves israelites or hebrew israelites right so right. do we associate with christianity no, however, we are indeed Christians, right? Okay. Let me ask you, Peter, what is your definition of a Christian? Someone I see as a Christian who believes that the divinity of Jesus Christ is from God or is God. Okay. Um, what does the word Christian itself mean? Just a disciple of Jesus Christ. People so are like... Okay, so the word disciple means follower, correct? Yeah. Okay, so we are followers of who the world calls Jesus Christ. So we are indeed Christians, right? Yeah. Well, then why, okay, no no offense, but you guys are constantly calling Christianity a drug. People of the Black Israelite Hebrew movement. So, Peter, um, try to refrain from using the term Black Israelite. Okay, just, but that's what it is. No, it's, it's not. We're not Black. So, so, so here's the thing, right, Peter? Right? What, what would you say my ethnic background is just by looking at me? I have no idea. You have no idea. Well, if you if you were if if let's say I committed a crime and you witnessed it and you were calling the police, how would you okay. describe me? I'd say you're black. If I was like talking to someone to sketch you, I'd say you're a black man. Okay. Let me ask you a question. What is a black man? Um, someone that has like black skin. I don't know. Is my skin black? No, it's definitely like lighter brown. So 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 what so. so See, the fact that you even call us black, it just it demonstrates something that's prevalent here in American society. It's called white supremacy, right? Okay. So so you people you associate like, yourself as black? I don't associate myself as black. I'm not black. I okay. am an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. That's that's how I identify myself as. Okay. If if I, I don't see see here's the thing, right? We live in a society that's been shaped by what? Western European thought, correct? Uh, America as a whole is definitely under the oppression of whoever the Pope, right, sent into America to start a civilization. So you're talking about the papal bulls with uh, Pope Alexander the Sixth of Rome, right? If the Pope, if the Pope is the one that gave the go-ahead, that means the Pope's in charge, right? So that means the whole civilization he... that's being pushed through into America would be directed by the Pope. I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily say it's, it's controlled by the Pope. It definitely, you know, the, the go ahead. I would say that you're correct. And that the go ahead or the thumbs up from the Pope through the papal bulls for Spain yeah. and Portugal to go forth into the to the new world and to conquer into in the name of Christianity and Christendom. I do yeah. believe I understand that. But to say that that, you know, America is controlled by the Pope, I wouldn't go that far. However, again, right. when we look at American society and just. How things are in the world on a global scale, Western okay. European Caucasians are the ones who hold what's known as hegemony, correct? Yeah. Okay, so 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 the way that American society is is ran is from the lens of of white people, so-called white people being supreme. Okay. Right? Okay, so 
Now, let me ask you a question. Is your skin white? Well, I would say it's more from the lineage or heritage of where I come from. Where, where do you come from? I have no idea. I took a DNA test. I come from like multiple European countries, but there is Congo in my lineage. Okay, that's that. That's, so you have, okay, you, but, have you have Congolese DNA somewhere in you. Right, in your... but I'm not. I'm not saying I'm black. Like I'm obviously not black. I've got like blonde hair. Mm -hmm. right. I, I understand that, right? So, but 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 yeah. again, so Peter, my my question is: Is your skin white? The answer is no. Your skin is not white, right? I can grab, okay. I can grab this pair of white sneakers and your skin tone does not match this white it actually more resembles this red heel tab right here okay so so we live in a society that's been shaped by by white supremacy right yeah. this, this social construct of something called race right. right well when we look at this social construct known as race right it's it's a flawed is a flawed science that goes back that stems back to 17th century german Caucasian, yeah. so called white sci yeah. scientists, and I use that term very loosely because that's not a real science. Where they believe that you can categorize uh, people groups into three or five races, right? We get mongoloid, yeah. Caucasoid, and Negroid, right? Yeah, and we got this whole idea of race that stems from that, right? Well, yeah. that's not that's not real. So the labeling of people as black. Or Negro, Negroid, and labeling people as white or Caucasoid, right, based off of phenotypes, yeah, right, is not how ancient societies reckon a nationality, right? Yeah. So, so we live in that world, right? So again, I'm not black, you're not white, right? Right. So you believe in the Bible, correct? I believe, honestly, personally, just as me, I believe a lot of text in the Bible has to be wrong why do you believe that because throughout i mean first of all we got it's like throughout the bible um the contra like there's a lot of contradictions in the bible like give me one example like if you look at okay so you have to use so there's a hundred different translations if you talk about even the paul talking to jesus christ in the desert you oh. have to so Paul, when, Paul, when, when did Paul talk to Jesus Christ in the desert? When he encounters Jesus in the desert, right? The light. Right? Like the light comes like what, what account is what account in the Bible shows Paul meeting Jesus Christ or encountering Jesus right, Christ? Because Paul states the, he's an apostle because in order to be an apostle, you have to encounter Jesus Christ. Of course. So the so you're talking about the road Jesus. to Damascus? Right. So when he's in the desert, okay? And where, then where, the, it doesn't say Peter, it doesn't say desert. It says he was on the road to Damascus. You can't just okay. imply that there's a there's a desert. Okay, was it? I don't know. Was it? I thought you, I thought it was. I'm, I'm just I'm just saying that for for truth's sake, right, and for clarity's sake, you you can't just say that. Oh, he encountered him in the desert. I, I have no clue what you're talking about. He he encountered him on the road to Damascus. But okay, what's the contradiction that you see? So okay, so even if we're setting that aside, right? Jesus encounters or Paul encounters Jesus. Mm-hmm. And Paul's talking to Jesus, and it says in two different verses about how the people around him hear the voice of Jesus talking. And then later on down that context, it says that the people around him don't hear the voice. So within just that same like book, book chapter verse, can you show me that? I'm, I don't know. I'm on my phone. Okay. Well, regardless of that, right? That, that's that. See, that's that's. And this is what listen, listen. This is. Can you give me I'm, another example of a contradiction in the Bible. Yeah, for your guys, for you guys' movement, okay. Like, you guys are talking about you guys ground yourself on Paul. You believe in Paul's epistles. I, I wouldn't say we ground ourselves on Paul, right? We we. But we, you've put Paul. You've put Paul in the foundation of what you've based upon. No, 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 I don't. My the foundation. See, here's the issue. See, see, Peter. Instead of instead of trying to superimpose your thoughts. Okay. On, right, on, I'm sharing on our, on our movement, right? Because what you're what you're demonstrating is is white supremacy, right? This you're white explaining right now. You're trying to explain to people who are not white about their culture and their ideology and their belief right. system well, from your okay, lens. If we're clashing, which is white if huh? we're clashing, if we're clashing, I'm showing. If we're clashing, I'm showing. Okay, as me that 
the people. Okay, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Okay, so so let's let's slow down, right? So again, okay. right? My foundation as an Israelite, right, does not rest in the writings of Paul. Does that mean that I throw Paul's writings away? Absolutely. Right. Not. You trust you trust in Paul's writings. So you've built your to an extent to whatever an Paul okay, but whatever Paul writes, you have to associate with. Hold on, Peter, Peter, who 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 says that? Who makes that the how, whole black Israelite movement that there's a bunch of different Peter, denominations Peter, within Peter, 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 have all making, agreed on Paul. So if Paul Peter, is Peter, a shaky Peter. foundation, then the whole foundation of what you based upon is kind Peter, of are you are you a racist? I really hope not. Okay, so so I'm gonna let you know as as, as a as a so called black man. Again, I'm not black, but I'm called black. Right? Okay. I don't I don't like being called black, right? And in okay. the Hebrew Israelite movement, we don't like being labeled as black Hebrew Israelites because we believe that so called again the term so called right blacks so called blacks Hispanics who would not be considered black, right? According yeah. to the U.S. Census. Hispanics and Latinos, Latinos will be considered white, right? And the Native Americans are Israelites. So it's not a black thing, right? So so please right. stop using that phrase, right? So so again, instead of trying to white explain what my movement is, right? Let me yeah. just show, let me just explain to you, right? We again, yeah. we believe that so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, again, the term so-called is being used for a reason. Okay. Because we're n neither of those things. These are proverbs and bywords that were placed on us by your ancestors, right? Yeah. So we believe that we are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Right. We understand and believe that the entire Bible, right, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, right, was written by Israelites. Yeah. Right? That the Israelites, according to the Bible, are God's favorite and chosen people. And that right. The people... The people, yeah, yeah, the people he inherited. Yeah, and and that all of the promises, right, the promises of good and redemption and reconciliation and salvation and yeah, uh, reigning with Christ in the kingdom, all of that belongs to the Israelites. Right. That's what we believe, right? Yeah. Based upon the scriptures, not based upon a doctrine that's been handed down to us from yeah. people who have nothing to do with the book. Yeah. So, so now, right? So you believe in the Bible, right? But you believe that there's contradictions in the Bible. Can you give me another example? Dude, all, all I'm saying is that the Bible, like the whatever Bible you have in possession of, isn't a hundred percent correct. What you is need, what is a hundred percent correct? Mean? It doesn't contradict itself. There's not a mistranslation. There's not a wrong word. So, that, so Peter, like, Peter, a, a wrong Peter, a wrong word. Like for instance, I'll give you an example. Like, I, no, I, no, okay. But listen, right? I primarily use the King James Version Bible, right? Yeah. Uh, hold on one second. Let me go ahead and move this. Yeah. Give me a second. Oh, let's go right here. Because I feel like I'm looking away from you. So, so Peter, right? Yeah. I'll give you an example. The so-called uh, New Te in the so-called New Testament, in the Book of Acts, the 12th chapter, the King James Version Bible, which is my preferred translation, yeah. right? It uses right. the word. It, it translates the, translates the Greek word pasaka, right, as Easter, right. Is that correct? No, that's not correct, right? But is that a con does the Bible contradict itself? Yeah. No, contradiction. Let's look at the word contradict. Let's look at what it means real quick. Let me go ahead and share my screen because this is this. Okay, is but dude, if you watch a lot of like Muslim debates, you can watch Muslims debate Christianity all day, and they'll show contradictions in the Bible. M Muslims, first right? of all, like Muslims will do. Listen, I'm, I've had several conversations with Muslims. Muslims don't even know their Quran, right? Let alone do they right. know their know the Bible, right? So let's look yeah. at the word contra contradiction: a combination of statements, yeah. ideas, or features of a uh, features of a situation that are opposed to one another, right? right. Person or person, thing or situation in which inconsistent yeah. elements are present. The statement uh, of a position opposite to one already made, right? So right. are there any positions that the Bible makes that are that are opposed to one another? Can you give me an example? Okay, if it says that they heard a voice and then later on in scripture like 14 chapters in the same book. Um 
says that the same verse is different. Like, can you, the, can you tell me the verse you're talking about? Okay, if you just, I mean, literally Google like YouTube about, but it, this is what I'm saying is that if you look at the ESV version or separate versions, it'll make sense. You have to use other translations of the Bible. And then what that Bible is saying will make sense. Does so that make Peter, sense? So no, no, Peter, that doesn't make sense, right? And, and, and here's the thing. You, sir, are not the vanguard or the one who gets to make these assertions about what makes and what does not make sense. I'm, okay, but if I'm just, okay, as my, what I'm sharing, okay, the different translations in the Bible are, if you look at different versions, okay, they'll say that the verse is separate, like, it contradicts itself, like plain and well, it's not. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so if the ESV says something different than the KJV says, does the one Bible... has to be wrong? No, 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 no. I, I hear you, right? Okay. In the example that I'm giving you, the the, the ESV, let's say the RSV. Let's say on a particular okay. verse, they don't. They're, they're saying things different or wording things differently, right? Yeah. Does that mean that the Bible, right? The that the Word no. of God. Slow down. Wait. Does that mean that the, the word of God contradicts? No. Right. That, that's an issue with a translation. Right. And you, sir, I know that you're not equipped to have a conversation about textual criticism. Right. Yeah. When we look at the Bible. Right. What? No matter what translation you're talking about. Right. Guess what? Those translations were translated from manuscripts. Right. Yeah. Of, or, or, or codices. Right. Yeah. That. In themselves, do not contradict themselves. You, for instance, I'll give you an example: the Septuagint, uh, the, the the Dead Sea Scrolls, which were found in the 1940s, right? Which a lot of people lean on. A well, no, lot no, a lot, people... a lot, a lot of people don't lean on the. A lot of people do not lean on the Dead Sea Scrolls because that's what the Dead Sea Scrolls, by and large, are made up of fragments, right? Yeah. You have the Isaiah Scroll, right? But for the most part, you have mostly. Fragments. Okay, this right? is what I'm trying to say. This no, is, no, no, this... no, but wait, no, but wait, Peter. Right, I'm not finished. Yeah. Right. The point is, when we look at the Dead Sea Scrolls or what we or what we can identify, which yeah. verses these, these are, and when yeah. we look at what's known as the Masoretic text, guess what? They line up perfectly. They don't contradict. Right. Yeah. So, so the issue is again, you're, <laughs> again, you're not equipped to have a conversation about textual criticism, right? You're, I don't you're... know Greek. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, the I, I, understand, I understand that, right? I, and that's that's fine, right? But you, but you, sir, are a Christian, but you don't believe wholly in the Bible. Dude, I don't even know if Paul was a real apostle. Well, go, listen, because because I, if you look at if you look at the foundation of the 12 apostles that the whole kingdom of heaven is based upon for eternity, right? Paul would be like 13, 14. Like uh, okay, so 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 Peter, right? Yeah. The 12 apostles go back to what the 12 disciples, right? And this is what I'm trying no, 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 to tell no, 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 you. No, 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 Peter, Peter, just just follow me. For down your movement, line. you have no, to no, kind no, of no, discredit no, Paul. No, 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 Peter, 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 you, you again, you got to stop engaging in white supremacy and trying to tell me about my movement, right? I'm just so sharing, again, dude, no other white person feels this way that I know. I, I, I Peter, to be quite honest, I don't really care about the feelings of most white people, right? I'm having a dialogue with you, right? Kind about of. about about my about the Bible, about the the, the, okay. the history of my family members, right? Okay. My my nation, right? Yeah. So, right, let's walk down this logic, right? The twelve disciples, the twelve apostles, go back to the twelve disciples, correct? Okay. What happened to one of the twelve disciples? He killed himself, correct? Right. Okay, and so then that one's gone, and now they had to pick a new uh, disciple to be right. an apostle, right? What's the difference between a disciple and an apostle? Like, we're not apostles. We're I'm disciples. an apostle. I, I'm an apostle. Okay, maybe you're, I don't know. Maybe I don't you're, understand what an you're, apostle is. You're not an apostle. Of the 12? Hold on, I'm, I'm not, I'm I'm not, definitely not, not an apostle. No, Peter, wait, wait, wait. Just for the record, I'm not saying that I'm one of the 12 disciples or one of the 12 apostles. I'm not saying that, right? Okay. But the word apostle literally means sent out one, one who is sent out, right? Did okay. Jesus Christ, when he encountered uh, Paul, right, did he tell him to go forth and preach the gospel? Right, but Paul's no, no, Answer that question, yes or no? Yes or no? Did he, did he do that? If if Paul met Jesus, 
According and to that's the, what Jesus uh, Peter, be telling him to do. Uh, Peter, according to the text, according to the book of Acts, right? I was at Acts the eighth right, chapter. Which Paul was, wrote. Right. Paul did not write the book of Acts, sir. Okay, it's his epistles. It's no, no, under no, 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 it's no, under no. the name of Paul. No, 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 Peter. The book of Acts is okay. called the Acts of the Apostles, and it's not attributed to Paul. It's attributed to Luke, the writer of the Gospel of Luke. Luke and Acts were considered one work, right? The okay. Gospel according to Luke and the Acts of the Apostles. That's attributed to Luke, not to Paul, right? So, right. so again, if we're looking at the text or right, the, the, the accounts of the Apostles, and these are just stories. This is just history, right? This yeah. People... It's like, for instance, if me and you went to the same event, let's say we both went to the Super Bowl, right? Okay. We were sitting in different sections of the Super Bowl, yeah. right? The lighting, the lighting may be different, right? And you yeah. may account the, 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 the performance by Rihanna, right? Yeah. Say, oh, she had a, a scarlet uh, uh, ensemble, all right? And I could have said she had a crimson ensemble. I could have said, oh, it was, <laughs> it, was it was infrared. Yeah. Regardless of that, right, we have different vantage points and we're, we're – we're giving an account of the same exact event, right? Just because we look at it and view it from a different lens, right, doesn't make make that a contradiction. That's what I need you to understand, right? Secondly, yeah. right, when we look at the 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 book of Acts, which is not attributed to yeah. Paul, right? The book of Acts literally, right, details an encounter between the resurrected. Right. Jesus it's like a, it's like a story. It's not like a narration. Like I don't know. Yeah, it's, from my yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so it, it literally has Christ speaking to Paul, right? Who yeah. at the time was known as Saul by his Hebrew name, right? Right. And he was told to go forth and to preach the gospel, right? Yeah. So that would make him an apostle. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, so now that we're done with that, right? Okay. I, as an Israelite, do not hang my my ideology and my hat on the epistles to Paul. Why? Right, not saying again, that does not mean that I don't read Paul's epistles or I don't gain wisdom and understanding and knowledge from Paul. Right. And there, dude, there's a lot of things I go through in life where I reflect upon Paul and I'm like, damn, like Paul made it that I'm like, damn, like Paul got me. Like, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. Like, so, so, but, but here's the thing, Peter, right? Paul's epistles are not authoritative to my life. And the reason why I'm saying that is because. Paul was an apostle who was sent to preach the gospel and to set up churches. Right, right? like Turkey. Right? Yeah, like, you know, all throughout Asia Minor, right, to set up right. churches, right? And he, as an apostle who was head of those churches, he gave instructions to those specific churches, right, about specific things. When we read the book of the First Corinthians, right, the epistle, I don't even like calling it a book, right, the the. Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians, right? He mentions that they wrote unto him. Are we right? still alive? Yeah, no, we're, we still, we're still good. I've... Yeah, we're still good. We're still good, right? So what I was saying is in Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians, he literally mentions how they wrote unto him, right? And he's responding to some of the things that they wrote unto him. Oh, sorry, right? are we still alive? Are we still alive right now? Yes, 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 Peter. Can you hear me? Okay, okay awesome. Right? Yeah. So did you hear what I said about Paul's epistle to the Corinthians? You got to start over. Sorry, brother. Okay, gotcha. All right, so we look at, for instance, yeah. an example of Paul's epistle to the Corinthians, right? It's a yeah. letter, right? In the letter of his first epistle to the Corinthians, he mentions yeah. that they wrote unto him. Yeah. Peter, you can't leave You can't leave the, the browser. That's why you're not going to hear me. You, Peter, can you hear me? Okay. You cannot leave the brow your browser. If you leave the browser, you're not going to be able to no, hear me. No, 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 no. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Gotcha. All right. Cool. Right. So, yeah. Paul is writing these epistles about specific situations that were happening in those churches, and he's responding to them or, or different yeah. instances. Right. Like, in, for instance, the the epistle to the Galatians. Right. There were there were Jews coming down to Galatia and and what. what People call it Judaizing, saying that you cannot be saved unless you're circumcised. Right. You cannot be saved unless, and Paul's addressing those things, right? So what happens is Christianity, right, takes Paul's epistles, right, which are about specific things to specific audiences, and apply them to all mankind and, and create doctrines off of them, and that's right. problematic. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. You can't. You can't say Paul's epistles 
I mean, maybe you could. Maybe I haven't like dove in deep enough if you really dissect what Paul's saying. But like for the most person, for like a white person like me, I would read Paul's epistles and say, oh, I'm an inheritor of the kingdom of God. I, like I, we I, all I, I got you. So let me read you a Bible verse real quick, right? So okay. let me ask you a question. Who was the head apostle? Was Paul the head apostle? Peter. Peter. Good, good, good. You got you know, a little Bible trivia, right? So let's go to the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. Yeah. Right. So now, now before we go there, right? So Peter is writing this epistle, right? It says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, right. Asia, Bithynia, right? When we look at this word for uh, strangers, no, that's not the, right. This, this word for scatter is diaspora, right? This is the yeah. diaspora. The diaspora right. of who? The diaspora of Israelites, right? It says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. So let's right. look at this real quick, right? Let's look at the book of uh, Isaiah, right? Isaiah 45 and verse 4, right? Um, it says, for, my, uh, for Jacob, my servant's sake, in Israel, mine elect. Okay. Right? Israel is the elect, right? According to the Bible. I right. have... Even call thee by thy name, I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. So when we look at the book of First John, the second chapter, it says that knowing God, hereby we do the, know that we know God when we keep his commandments. Right? He that say, if yeah. I know God and keep if not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. So right here we see uh -huh. that the Israelites, right? They're the elect, even though, right, they were named by God and they have not known God, meaning they were not keeping the commandments. It says, I am the Lord. And there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Because what was happening? Yeah. Happened. Israel yeah. was worshiping idols, correct? Yeah. Right? So when we look at the book of First Peter, chapter the epistle of First Peter, right? P Peter's first epistle, right? He's writing this epistle to who? To the strangers, right? Who if you're a stranger, that means you don't you're not right, the not lost. Lord. Right, the lost. Yes, yeah, so these are these are they don't, they don't identify like if I already talked to you and they don't identify as the same as me, you'd be a stranger. Yeah, right. So th these right. people are actual descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They have not right. known God, and it says right here, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, right? So God yeah. foreknew them, and he's they're still the elect, even though they don't know him, right? Yeah. So this is who Peter's writing to, right? Now, now check this, right? In first Peter 2 and verse 20, I'll start at verse 20. Uh, 21, it says, for even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, right? We read about Christ's suffering in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, correct? Right. Now, let's, let's, let's go there real quick. Brother, I got a, I got a quick question for you. Go ahead. Okay. What's your question? Do you believe Jesus is God? I believe that Jesus is a God, yes. I don't believe that he's the most high God. Do you believe he's the son of God? Yes, he's the son of God. Okay. Do you believe... Okay, so in in Isaiah, it talks about paving the way for Yahweh. Okay. And then in John, in Mark 1, it talks about John the Baptist saying, we pave the yay, or we pave the way, okay, for Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So, Peter... Okay? So you're taking us off topic, right? Let's 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 we can go. We well, can what talk I'm about... saying is no, 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 wait, wait, the wait, wait, same wait. Jesus we're believing in, right? I believe the Most High God dwelt with them among us. So so so, so Peter, so, so let's slow down. Let's not change the subject, right? We right. If you say that. Jesus came in the flesh, I don't know. Yeah, we we can talk about that, but let's stay on topic, right? Okay. So so let's get back to where we were talking about, right? So we're talking about. Uh, you were asking you because this is how we got here, right? You said that you, as a white guy, right? You read Paul's epistles and you say, You see, I see that, and I see that I could be a partaker in the kingdom of heaven. That's what you said, right? Right, right. Along those lines, right? So, right. what I'm doing is demonstrating here in the in the epistle of Peter, Peter's first epistle, and Peter, he is the head apostle, right? He's who Christ gave, uh, he's the rock in which Christ built the church. Right. Okay. And, and so so what he has to say is very important. Right. His epistle is written to strangers who are elect of God. Right. Scattered or part of the diaspora. Okay. Right? So 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 again. Right. When we look at Peter's first uh, uh, 
second first epistle in the second chapter, right? It talks about how we were called here unto because Christ suffered for us. So yeah. Paul, so Peter is talking about the Israelites. He's he's identifying that Christ suffered for us, and Christ's suffering we find out about in Isaiah the fifty third chapter, right? Right. It says that he was bruised, right? Uh, verse five it says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. Right? So who's the us here? The us here are the Israelites. So Paul, so Peter's identifying that Christ suffered and died for the Israelites. Right? Let's keep reading. Right? It says, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. This is the true definition of a, of a Christian, uh, right? Following Christ's steps. Actually, this is not the epistle I want to go to, right? But it says, who did not sin, who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth, right? So Peter is identifying that yeah. Christ died and suffered and died for the Israelites, right? Now, let's go to 2 Peter 3 and 3.15. Hey, Sorry. I got a question. I got a question. For you. Is it on topic? Do you believe that the most high God can dwell within you? So, 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 so again, do you that, believe the most high God can dwell within you? So Peter, 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 wait, before we go again, before we go there, right, let's continue on this point, right? Let's just, not, it's just a question before, like, I want to listen to you. Do you believe the most high God can make a dwelling within you? Yes, through his Holy Spirit. Yes, we are the temple. This okay. first, first Corinthians, the third chapter says that we are the temple of God, right? Got you, right? Right. So, and let's Paul get there. says that I have died and Jesus now lives in me. Okay, cool. Let's, right. let's, so if you, let's, if, you, if you agree with Paul, you're saying that Jesus is the most high that dwells no, no, I'm no, no, no. Hold on, Peter. No, I'm not. But let's, again, we, we can address that in a second. Just wait. Just hold on, bro. Like, come on. Right? Let's do, did, did, Paul, did not Paul say, let us do, let, let all things be done decently and in order? Right? Let's, right. I just let's don't know finish. if I should listen to you. Let, 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 like let's finish. Should, right? Because John says the anointing teaches us. We shouldn't let anyone teach us. So I don't even know if I should listen to anything coming out of your mouth. Okay, that's that's fine and dandy. And the reason why you feel that way is because I'm a bl I'm I'm black, right? And 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 what I say, who cares, right? We live in a world where white is right. But regardless, let's let's get back into the Bible, right? Second Peter chapter three and verse fifteen. It says, "In account that the long suffering of our Lord, which is Jesus Christ, is salvation." Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you, right? Who's the you that he's talking about, right? The people that Paul's writing to. The same people that Paul's writing to is the people that Peter's writing to, right? Okay. It says also, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things in which are some things hard to be understood, Right, which they that are on are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So we right. see here that Peter is, is is making it very clear that people who are unlearned in the scriptures, right, who are unlearned in the law, who are unlearned in the prophets, who are unlearned in the writings, like in the Psalms, things of that nature, right? They're unstable and they rest or twist Paul's epistles, the things that he's writing. There's things in his epistles that are hard to be understood. So the reason why you as a white man, so-called white man, <laughs> pick up the book, pick up Paul's epistles, and you come to the conclusion that you can be a partaker in the kingdom of God. Right. You, sir, are unlearned in the previous scriptures. Let me demonstrate that. Right. So let's go to the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter. Right. Daniel 12 is very important. Right, prophecy in general is very important. Would you agree? I don't. Well, sorry, what'd you say? I said prophecy is very important. Would you agree? Prophecy in Daniel. I said prophecy in general is very important. Correct. I don't get. Can you hear me? Right, but people fall to prophesy. Huh? People fall to prophesy. Right, like whole cults, religions. Peter, I'm talking about the prophets of God in the Bible, right? So Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, so forth and so forth. That prophecy is important, correct? Okay. Right? Okay. Because Christ said out of his own mouth, well did Isaiah prophesy, right? Right, Peter? 
Peter, can you hear me? Okay, okay right? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. So check this out, right? Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. Let me make sure I'm sharing the screen real quick, right? Revelation chapter 19, yeah. verse 10. It says, and I fell uh, at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So the testimony of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So prophecy is very important, right? So the reason why you, sir, yeah. do not understand don't understand you look at paul's epistles and you rest or you twist or you you come to conclusions that are contrary to the rest of the bible is because you're unlearned what i'm saying is you need all translations of the bible in order for it to make sense you need you can't conclude that the bible you have has all truth in it you need all of them so 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 let me ask, let me ask in order question. to fit it all in it who, who what what is true god's word or or man's word no one has god's word sitting in front of them Okay. Okay. No one has every word. Well, the, word, I, word. I, I didn't. No, Peter. I didn't say every word of God. I said God's word, right? Right. Which would have to contain every word of God in order it to be no, his no, word. No, 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 Peter. It wouldn't have to contain every word of God, right? It wouldn't be His word, sir. I'm speaking words to you right now, right? Okay. If I leave the room and go speak words to my wife, right, and you didn't hear those words, right? Right. Does does that does the fact that you didn't hear those words make the words that I spoke to you not my words? Right. No, answer that question. Yes or no? Um, but what's transcribed no, 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 has no, no, come no. from no, no, Peter, no, So Peter, those Peter, people Peter, need to hear it. Peter, answer the question, right? If I, I leave the, it. if so if I leave the room, right, and I speak to my wife, you don't hear the words. Okay. Right? The but what's written in the book, God didn't write down himself. He wrote with men that have heard with themselves. No, 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 Peter, no, no, duh. We know that God has. Then what said, are you saying, bro? No, no, no. no. What I'm demonstrating, sir, is that the Bible emphatically has the word of God, but every word in the Bible is not the word of God. What do I mean by that? Right? When God is speaking in the Bible, you'll see, thus saith the Lord. You can encounter God in the Bible. Whatever huh? translation you have, God himself can speak to you through the Bible. Okay, but the Bible you have. So who does God say? Who does God say? Who does God say He speaks to? He's spoken to me, bro. What's what's His name? Jesus. Sir, no, the God of the Bible. His name is not Jesus, right? Yes. The the letter Peter, the letter J, first and foremost, is less than five hundred years old. You are aware of that, correct? Right. So so so. There's no way that the God of the Bible, the Bible is a is an ancient book that goes spans back thousands of years. The God of the Bible, or the God that's mentioned in the Bible, the supreme deity, the name. The okay, God so of, if I, no, if no, no, I Peter, pray, Peter, wait, Peter, wait till I'm finished speaking, right? The God of the Bible that's speaking to his people, right? His name is not Jesus, right? Jesus, whose real name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai, is right. the son of God. He is not the God of the Bible, right? So anyway, right? Brother, if I were to fill a river in my heart, who could do that but Jesus? Satan. Really? Yeah. Does Satan not have power? You think he could fake that? Yes. Let me let me demonstrate that. Let me let me demonstrate that. Right? Check this out, right? Let's go to the book of First Kings. Holy shit. For the book of First Kings, chapter 22, right? See, I believe in this Bible, and, and and I wholeheartedly right study this Bible, right? So this is the book of First Kings, chapter twenty-two, and verse nineteen. It says, "And he said, um, uh, okay, boom." And it says, "It says, and he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord, right? The word for Lord, you may see heard of the term Yahweh, right? Jehovah, right? Okay. That that name there for Lord in the flesh, Jesus." No, 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 that, that, so, so again, Jesus Christ himself says that God is a spirit and they that worship Let's dwell in a body and his name is Jesus. Peter, 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 stop, stop, right? Okay. Jesus, who you're trying to give, uh, to, to put in the place of the Lord, which is Jehovah, which, which is either Jehovah, Yahweh, we call him Yahweh, Right. Okay. You doing that Which, goes okay. against huh, goes against Christ. 
right? And what yeah. Christ said, Christ says that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Didn't right? Jesus go to the temple of God, which the father dwells in, right? The father dwells in the temple. And then Jesus says, I will resurrect this temple talking about himself in three days. Oh, d d okay. So meaning Jesus uh, is a temple, right? Uh, He's a body, a temple for the presence sir, of sir, Yahweh. Sir, sir. So do you claim to have God's spirit dwelling in you? Yes. Jesus is just claiming that he has God's spirit dwelling in him. That does not make him the most high God. So anyway, so so stop interrupting, Peter, right? And let me make this point, right? But he's the no, only no, no, Peter, begotten. Peter, Peter, right? Peter. So I'm not begotten from God. Peter, Peter, I'm pumpkin adopted. eater. Peter, Peter, the stop. The only begotten has come directly from God. Peter, 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 There's Peter. There's nothing no. else but God. Peter, right? Peter, 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 stop. Let's do things decently. I don't think you understand, bro. No, no, I know that you don't understand. Actually, let me get this. Let me just pull this, pull this, this shotgun real quick, right? You, sir, do not understand. So this is the book of Daniel chapter 12, all right? And it's verse 10. It says, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. That's right? like what I'm saying. No, 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 shush, shush. The Bible calls the Edomites the border of wickedness. The book of Job, the ninth chapter, verse 24, says that the that 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 the earth has been given into the hand yeah. of the wicked. Yeah. And the wicked cover the faces of the judges thereof, right? Yeah. You, sir, are a Caucasian, a white man. White people have You said I wasn't white like a couple times already. A, a so called I'm using a colloquial term. You are a so called white person. You are a Caucasian, right? So, so the Bible identifies your people as the Edomites, right? Biblically, okay. right? You guys are the Edomites. According okay. to the Bible, the Edomites are the border of wickedness. The Bible says that many are going to be made pure and white, right? Let's go back to Daniel 12 and 10. Many shall be purified and made white, right? And tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. You, sir, are part of the nation that the Bible calls the border of wickedness. Therefore, you are incapable of understanding the Bible. And this is why you go into Paul's epistles and you jump to these conclusions, right? That you have somehow, some way, some part in the kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God, which the Bible says belongs to the Israelites, right? Because you're yeah. unlearned in the prophets. You're unlearned in the yeah. Torah. You're unlearned in the Bible, right? Right. But so the Pharisees were the most learned in the Torah than anyone else. At that time, what do you, what, what does that have to do with anything right now? Because that's the, the whole your whole point is saying I'm unlearned in the Torah, right? No, and no, no, the no, most no, egregious no, people no, no, were the no, people no, that no, were learned point, in the Torah. Peter, Peter, the point is that you are unlearned in the Bible in general, right? Because okay. guess what? The God's word, which is emphatically found in the Bible only, right? Yeah. Again, not every word in the Bible is God's word, right? God yeah. lets you know when he's speaking. Right, right. God. You, you encounter Jesus when you're talking to Jesus, and you encounter Jesus. You know it's Jesus. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Me, me, me Peter. Stop. Right. So, so, yeah. so. Let me. Are you familiar with Daniel the seventh chapter? No, you can keep going. No, I'm asking you. Are you from? Are you familiar with Daniel the seventh chapter? I do not know Daniel seventh chapter. Okay. Cool. Right. So again, Peter, the apostle Peter, whose name was Simon Peter. Right. He says that those that are unlearned in the prior scriptures, right, in okay. Daniel, in Isaiah, right, in the prophets, in the Torah, in the writings, right, such as the Psalms and the Proverbs, right, that they who are unlearned in those scriptures will twist and rest Paul's epistles as they also do the other scriptures. So right. And that's what's claimed in Peter and people that are trying to make Paul's apostles hold weight have to go to that scripture in Peter. But if you look at the history of that, no one knows where that, that's like a hundred years, like people don't know. I don't know why you're so that. hung up on on Paul's epistles. I, I don't care, right? What because I'm trying to help you, bro. I'm saying if you're trying to make what Peter, you're saying, Peter, Peter, old Peter. weight, you have to ignore Paul. I don't have to ignore Paul, right? First and foremost, again. Okay, the mystery, bro, I'm a Gentile, you're an Israelite. The mystery behind all of it. What word Gentile mean, is, Peter? 
Okay, you can talk about the different tribes of Israel. You can talk no, about no, Peter, the no, tribes Peter, of Israel. Peter, Peter, you set Peter. up a church. You set up a church in Turkey, brother. Okay, and random people who come into your church that aren't a part of your group, like white people that are in Turkey, Peter, are what also does the word Gentile And if you consider mean? those Gentiles as also inheritors of the kingdom of God, which is Peter, the great Peter, mystery, Peter, behind Peter, all of Peter, 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 stop. What is the kingdom of God? Those that are born again of God. Book chapter verse. Where, where in the Bible does it say what you're saying? You cannot enter into the kingdom of God unless you're born again of water and spirit. Okay, that's not what I asked you. I said, what is the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven? What is it? I don't know, bro. It's like a whole other place. You, you, you don't know, right? So let's demonstrate, right, the point that was made by our beloved brother, Peter, okay. right, okay. in regards to how people like yourselves, right, do okay. not understand Paul's epistles. Right, because you don't understand the rest of the scriptures, right? Let's go to the book yeah. of Micah four, right? And verse dude, have you ever been to a church and an atheist walks into church? Dude, can we can we can who's we, not a part can, of you? Can you stop asking me silly questions? Brother, would that atheist still be a gentile? Peter. Yes, that, that atheist is a gentile. That's Peter, how we Peter, describe Peter, him. Peter, 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 stop. We're about to we describe him as a Gentile. That's the no, name no, we've Peter, given him. Peter, stop it, sir. Okay, Let and the great mystery behind all of it I'm is gonna that you, Peter, everyone's if, an inheritor. Peter, if you continue to interrupt me as I try to if read the Bible, if, if you continue to interrupt me as I try to read the Bible, I'm going to mute you. You like Act like you have some sense. Like Have some decorum. Have some couth. Right? So the word of God is getting ready to be read. And you have the gall, the audacity the 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 unmitigated caucasity to run your mouth as the word of God is getting ready to be read. If you were in a church right now, right, and the pastor was reading the Bible, Bro, right, you, I don't need anyone to no, teach no, me. Peter, I don't have Peter, to go to a pastor. I don't Peter, have to go Peter, to you. Peter, Peter, the anointing teaches me. Peter, Peter, sir, you're not yeah. anointed. Okay, you're not part of the anointed, right? The anointed or the chosen. All the Israelites who have been born world. again, no, no, Peter, Yahweh. Peter, no, Peter, stop talking while I'm talking, right? But you don't understand. No, 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 Peter, I have to Peter, correct Peter, you like every Peter, step. Peter, I have to stop. literally walk you through this, brother. You, you, first and foremost, let, let, let's, let's, let, let's, let's stop playing games, right? I just muted you right now because you have no type of decorum or discipline or behavior, right? But yet you have the nerve to say that you have God's Holy Spirit. Or his anointing. First and foremost, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is a spirit of discipline, which you lack, sir. You don't even have the discipline to stop speaking while another man is speaking, especially a man trying to read the word of God in the Bible, which you claim to believe in. So I'm going to keep you on mute right now, all right, until I finish speaking because you, 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 you act like a child, right? I have to put you in timeout real quick. So let's look at the word of God, right? Through the prophet Micah, right? So Micah chapter 4 and verse 8, right? It said, actually, I'll start at verse 7. It says, and I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation. Who's that? Israel. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come. Even the first dominion, the king dumb, shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. And like that, he ran, right? You see, so-called Caucasians, right, who the Bible identifies as the Edomites, they, they, they're, they're proud. They're so proud. They they can't even be quiet for literally a half a minute while a Bible verse, which they claim to be the vanguards and, and have so much knowledge of, right, is being read. Amazing, right? So again, let's let let's let's look at this, right? The book of Micah, again, we, we establish in Daniel, uh, Revelation uh, 19 and 10, that the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy, 
we demonstrated how Peter, who's the head apostle, the apostle in which Jesus Christ, right, ordained as the rock in which the church was built off of, he lets you know that those who are unlearned and unstable in the other scriptures are going to read Paul's epistles and they're going to twist some things, right? They're going to do that because they're unlearned and they're unstable, right? Now, when we look at those scriptures that they would be unlearned and unstable in, well, who did God show those words unto? Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29 and verse 29, right? It says, the secret things belong unto the Lord, our God, our, that's possessive. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So the law of God, which is the first principles of the oracles of God, the word oracle, the root word is oral, which means something that is spoken by the mouth. Words are spoken by one's mouth. The first principles of the oracles of God or the beginning words of God are found in the law, in the Torah, the first five books of what's collectively known as the Bible, right? That was shown unto the Israelites and belongs unto the Israelites and for the descendants of the Israelites forever and ever, right? Let's go to the book of, of let's go to the book of Baruch. Oh, man. A, a classic, right? The, the, the beloved brother Baruch, the scribe of Jeremiah, all right? Let's go to the to the book of the prophet Baruch, right? Let's go to the fourth chapter, right? And let's start at the top. It says, this is the book of the commandments of God and the law, right? The law is the first principles of the oracles of God, right? That endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die, right? The law of God is the standard of what's good and what's evil. Right. If you keep God's commandments, you're good. Right. If you break God's commandments, you're evil. Right. The law of God was only shown unto the Israelites and only belongs to the Israelites. Right. Let's further demonstrate that. Let's go to the book of Psalm 147 verses 19 through 20. Right. I'm, I'm going to continue to harp on this point. Right. I will continue to harp on this point that. The Israelites, whoever they are, again, you don't have to believe that I am an Israelite. You don't have to believe that so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites. Whoever the Israelites are, guess what? They are the vanguards of what's known as the Bible. Point blank period, right? Psalms 147 verses 19 to 20. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments. Where are his statutes and judgments found? They're found in the law. It says, Unto Israel, he hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So the psalmist is praising Yahweh, praising the Most High God. Why? Because God only sold his word unto Jacob, unto the Israelites, right? Again, Deuteronomy 29, 29 demonstrates this as well. That the secret things belong to our God, but the things that which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law, right? It says forever. Let's go back to Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take heed of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof that thou mayest be illuminated, right? Why? Because Proverbs 6 and 23, the law is likened unto a lamp, right? For the law is a lamp and the command, actually, let me just get it. Let me not, let me not uh, paraphrase it. Let's just go there. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23, right? For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instructions are the way of light to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Right. So God's laws are going to allow you to be able to abstain and stay away from evil women. Right. Whether that's actual literal evil women or whether that's figurative in other doctrines or philosophies and ideologies. Right. Regardless of that. Right. Here, Baruch, right, is exhorting us to turn back to God. All right. And to take heed to his law that endure forever. Why? Because guess what? Niggas is dying every day, B, 
right? During this time, right? Baruch is reading this while the southern kingdom of Judah was just besieged by Nebuchadnezzar, right? And the higher echelons of Judean society, the, the king and the princes, right? They were amongst the captives in Babylon, right? Je king Jehoiakim, right? You got something called the rations tab tablets, right? All of that coincides with this, this time period in which Baruch, being one of the scribes, he's in captivity just like Daniel's in captivity during that first wave and just how Ezekiel's in captivity during that first wave, right? It's, he's saying, those that keep God's law will come to life. Those that break it are going to die, right? So he's exhorting them through the death that they just saw, right, in obscene amounts, right? To turn back to God so that they don't die, right? It says, turn the old Jacob, take heed to God's instructions or his law. Walk in the presence of the light thereof that thou mayest be illuminated. Why? Because the law is a light. It's the guiding light in how we're supposed to live. The reproofs of instructions are the way of life. The reproofs and instructions in God's instructions, which is known as the Torah, the law, all right, are the ways in which we are supposed to live. Who's the we, the Israelites, right? It says, give not thine honor. It's an honor, right, to have God's word, his instruction shown unto you. And this is why we see right here in Psalms 147, all right, in verse 20, that what the psalmist is praising Yahweh because he did not show his word unto the other nations. He did not show his wisdom, right, his instructions, his light to the other nations, right? Let's keep reading, right? Let's go back to Baruch, right? It says, give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee, unto a strange nation. Is O Israel, happy are we for the things that are pleasing to God are made known unto us. Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel, right? It's, then it goes on to say that you were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved God to wrath and you were delivered unto your enemies, right? Why? Because guess what? We just read here in Deuteronomy 29 and 29 that the law, which are the secret things of God, right? Well, the secret things of God, Salak here, belong to God. But the things that have been revealed, right, which was what? The law, the Torah, right? The, the reproofs and instructions of way of, or ways of life, right, were revealed unto us. They belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law, right? And if we don't do the words of this law, what happens? One chapter prior to, we see the blessings for keeping God's commandments, right? And we see the curses for breaking God's commandments, right? And we were sold to the nations. We were sold to, we were sold to the Babylonians, the Chaldeans who ruled in Babylon. Why? Not for our destruction, but because we moved God to wrath and anger through our disobedience of God's law, right? So again, this belongs to the Israelites, right? Let's go back to Michael chapter 4. Right, it says, and I will make her that halted a, a remnant, and her that was cast off. Again, Israel was cast off through their disobedience and through the curses of Deuteronomy and Leviticus 26 coming upon them due to the perfect word of God. Right, God told the Israelites, told us, so called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, that if we did not keep his commandments, he would punish us. Right, what we what blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans go through here in the Americas, right is evidence of us being the Israelites and coincides beautifully and, and, and perfectly with Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy the 28th chapter, which are the curses that God said would be a sign upon the seed of Israel as long as they're not keeping the commandments, as long as they're de being disobedient, right? However, we have promises of redemption and reconciliation. To be redeemed means to be bought back. To be reconciled means to be rejoined unto, right? It says, I will make her that was, that halted a remnant and her that was cast far off a strong nation and the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come even the first dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. I asked this man, what is the kingdom? Define the kingdom. And this is what the Bible defines the kingdom of heaven is, right? It's Israel, the daughter of Zion, having the first dominion, all right, and ruling. What, what does the word kingdom mean? Kingdom, the dominion of the king or the domicile of the king. 
Who is our king? Our king is who the world called Jesus Christ. Hamashiach Yahawashai, right? Who gave us promises as he received of his father, right? But before we go there, let's go to the book of Daniel chapter 7, right? And I'll start at verse 13, right? And again, he, he wanted to have a conversation about the divinity of Christ, right? If anyone wants smoke on the divinity of Christ, hit the email, right? Hit the email. Let's, let's, let me, let's get, let's get a banner going, right? If you want smoke, right, you want to be on the show, email me, right? The email is right here, right? It's my name, Ariala without an A, dot Yasha Allah at gmail.com, right? If you want to have a, a debate on the divinity of Christ, right? If you want to discuss Trinity, whatever, right? Hit the email and we can set up this smoke, right? Now, anyway, let's get back to the book of Daniel, right? To prophecy, right? The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy, right? This is Daniel chapter 7 and verse 13. It says, I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man. Hmm. It's called the son of man. He's also known as the son of God, right? But yet these people are trying to make him the most high God. What sense does that even begin to make, right? He is the, known as the son of man because he's literally the son of a man, right? He's known as the son of God, but guess what? The entire nation of Israel, they're known as the sons of God, right? The Lord told Moses to tell Pharaoh, Israel is my son. Yes, even my firstborn, right? But Christ is the only begotten son, right? And that word for only begotten, that phraseology in the Greek means, right, one of a kind son, right? I.e. his favorite son, right? So let's go to Daniel 7 and 13. It says, I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him, brought him near before him. So we see a juxtaposition. We see Jesus Christ, the son of man, being brought with, by the clouds of heaven to the ancient of days and him all right they brought him near before him right what does the term ancient of days mean right the term ancient of days is only applied to the most high god the father yahweh right let's look at the word for the phraseology ancient of days right it says i thought i thought yak uh your woman Right, I I say yak your wom ya. Right, so this is in uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is in Aramaic. Right, but let's look at this word right here. I say yak ancient, advanced, age, old, taken away. Right, it's the same as this. Removed. It means removed. Hmm. This is beautiful. Right, removed. Ancient, right? Right, but it means removed. Hmm. Removed of days, meaning he does not, he exists outside of the concept of what? Of days, right? Let's go back to that, right? This is beautiful through the spirit. All praise to Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, right? This is why you got to dive into the language, man. Right, so boom, right? It says, so we see the Son of Man, which is Jesus Christ, Yahweh being brought by the clouds of heaven in front of the ancient of days. He that is removed of days, the most high God, Yahweh. Christ is a created being, pursuant to Revelation 13, uh, 3 and 14, pursuant to first uh, uh Colossians 1 and 15 through 16, right? And even including uh according to John 1 and 1, right? This is in the beginning. But if days exist, right? There's a beginning of time when days start to exist. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, right? But anyway, right, it says he was brought to the ancient of days, right? It says, and there was given him. So the ancient of days is giving him dominion and glory in a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. Which shall not pass away in his kingdom that which uh that which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. 
I came near unto them, uh, unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of, of the things. The great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High, who's the Most High? The, the guy that's sitting on the throne that's called the Ancient or the Removed of Days, right? It says, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Now, again, the term saints, right, is used only in regards to Israel, right? The Israelites are the saints. Jesus Christ is an Israelite. Right? Hebrews 7 and 14 says, It is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So Jesus Christ is an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. He's the conquer he's the son of David. He's the conquering line of the son of Judah, therefore, I mean, uh, uh, the tribe of Judah. Therefore, he is a saint. It says, But the saints of the Most High. He is a saint of the Most High. Right? He just happens to be, all right. The best saint of the Most High. He happens to be right the only begotten Son of the Most High God. Right? It says, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Jesus Christ, right, along with his servants, are going to take the kingdom. Right? Let's go to the book of Luke. I believe it's in my kingdom of this world. Right? We'll go to John eighteen. Right? John eighteen and thirty six. Right? I'll start verse 35. It says, Pilate answered, uh, answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Right? Well, what is this word for world? Right? My kingdom is not of this world, right? Of this government, right? Of this government, this cosmos, right? So his kingdom was not of that particular cosmos, of that government, the government in which the what? The Romans ruling. It was not the time for them to be ruling, uh, for him to rule, right? Let's go back. I want to see right, Matthew 25 and 34. Right. Let's see this real quick. Right. Same thing. But from the before the foundation of the cosmos, right? His kingdom, right, was already established. It says, Then shall the king say unto them, uh, on his right hand, come ye, right? Who's the king? Right? We, right now we're looking at Christ coming back. Right. Let's start let's start at verse 31. It says, When the Son of Man shall come in uh in his glory and all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, right? He's given, being given dominion, right? When you're given dominion or kingdom, now you're the king and you get to sit on a throne of glory, right? It says, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate the one from the other. So, all right, Moabites, y'all over here. I'm going to put Ammon right here, right? The Philistines, we're going to put y'all right here, right? We're going to put uh, a Cush right here. All right, and we're going to put um, Edom right over here in the back, right? So he's separating the nations one from another, right? As a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right, his, the sheep, right? Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Matthew 15, 24, right? He says that I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice, right? And John 18 and 20 says that he spoke openly to the world, cosmos. He ever taught in the synagogues where the Jews always resort, right? The sheep are the Israelites, right? It says, come ye, blessed of my father, blessed of, so in his dominion, he's stating and giving glory to his father. It says, come ye, blessed of my father. Not blessed of myself, but blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the cosmos, of the world, right? So before the world, the world, the cosmos was arranged, right? The government of Israel, the government of, or any government, right? Before the Roman government, right? 
because again in in John eighteen it says my kingdom is not of this cosmos, right? That cosmos at that time, right? Who was in rulership were the Romans, right? And going back to Daniel the seventh chapter, what we're looking at the time in which right different kingdoms would arise on the earth. Let's go back, right? It says. Uh, it says, uh, these great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall rise of the earth, right? But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever, right? You got these four beasts, right? You got this this lion with 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 uh with wings, or you had this uh, what do you have? You had the bear with the with the ribs in his mouth, lifted up on one side, right? You have that leopard with the six wing with the six wings, or was it four wings? forget exactly right but you have this leopard with multiple heads and, and multiple sets of wings and then you have this dragon right right with a certain number of horns right these different beasts represent different kingdoms the babylonians all right or the neo babylonian empire ruled by the chaldeans right you got the medo persians right represented by that bear you had that leopard represented by the greeks and then you have that dragon represented by the romans right they had a time all right to rule, right? Let's go to Daniel the second chapter, which coincides also with Daniel the seventh chapter, Daniel two and verse forty-four. It says, "And in the days of these kings, which kings, right? The time in which this this uh, this empire, this divided empire, right? The Roman Empire was divided, right? In the time of the kings of this divided uh, Roman Empire, which is the Western European power structure." Right, we are in these last days. It says, "In the days of these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom? He's going to he's going to set, the God of heaven is going to set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people." Right, the son, his son, who is known as the Son of Man, is brought to him, and then he gives dominion to him. Right, it says, "And the king kingdom shall not be left to other people." Right, and the part of that kingdom that he's given, right, his people, right, who are the sheep that he put on his right side, right, they're given part in that kingdom, which coincides again with Micah 4 in verse 8, right? It says, But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest, the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold. The great God of heaven made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter in the dream of certain and its interpretation thereof sure, right? So the kingdom of God, right, or the kingdom the kingdom that God's getting ready to set up, I didn't have my, my screen shared, right? But the kingdom that God's getting ready to set up, right, and give the dominion and the, the keys of the helm to his son, Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai is his true name, right? That kingdom is getting ready to be established, and part of that kingdom does not include white people, right? White people will not be partakers, right, in the dominion that comes with that kingdom, because kingdom literally means the dominion of a king or the domicile of the king, right? Christ being the king, right, is going to give his co-heirs, right? Let's go there. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 25, right? It says... But that which ye have already hold fast till I come, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Christ is going to be given dominion, right? He's going to be given dominion that all nations, peoples, and tongues should serve him, right? And his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, right? He's saying to his followers, he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, coincides with Matthew, uh, what's that, 24 and 13, and he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. He that endureth or overcometh and keepeth the works of Christ until the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, right? So he says that he even as he's received of his father. Hmm, let's go to the book of Psalms. Psalm chapter two, right. and it's 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 a it's a relatively short psalm. So let's let's just read the whole thing, right? It says, "Why do the heathen rage, 
in the people imagine a vain thing. Whoever the psalmist is, more than likely David. David, I have a similar question, right? Why, why did Peter, this heathen, imagine a vain thing that he is a partaker in the kingdom? Why would he think something so ridiculous and asinine as that, right? It says the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder. Who is his anointed? His anointed are his saints, the Israelites, right? Let's look, let's look at the word for anointed, all right? It says, Mashiachwa, um, uh, right? Mashiachwa means his, his anointed, right? The nation of Israel was anointed, right? It says, it says, let us break their bands. Who's the, there is plural, right? Asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision, right? God's going to have these nations in derision, right? Why? Because they, they're doing these things, right? It says, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them with his sore displeasure. This right here is, is, Joel the third chapter, right? Joel the second chapter, right? Towards the end, starting in verse 27, it says that the Lord God is the God of Israel. He's in the midst of Israel. And he's the Lord their God and none else. Then it goes on to say that those, all they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be deliverance, those in Mount Zion, roughly paraphrasing. And then it goes on to Joel 3, where there's a gathering of these nations that have vexed the Israelites and them being brought down to the Valley of Decision, to the Valley of Yehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, to be judged or pleaded with, right? It says, then shall he speak unto them within his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy uh, hill of Zion, right? Who's the king that he's setting upon it, right? Who the world calls Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, thou art my son this day have I begotten thee? Ask of me, right? This is that, that I have begotten thee. Let's look. And this right here is the, is just a crazy Trinity cut, right? Because again, Christ is the one who this is re referring to, and there's no Christian, no learned Christian who actually has a little bit of sense, all right, and knows a little bit about the Bible would say that this is about anyone other than Christ, right? It says, "Have I begotten thee?" Right, Yalad, right, Yaladath Yaka, right. I have begotten thee, right. Let's look at this word from Yalad, begot. To bear, bring forth, beget, gender. What does it mean to gender? Right. I'm look, I want to look at the noun for gender. It's not giving me the, the, the I mean the verb, right? But the noun is the, the male sex or the female sex, especially when considered in reference to social and cultural differences rather than bio, biological. This is some new new age nonsense. But the word gender literally means to uh, create, right? It says to bear, bring forth of 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 childbirth, right? Let's see the actual definition. It says um, to bear young, to beget. Medically, to act as midwife, uh, especially to show lineage, bear, beget, birth, born, right? So Christ is born, <clears throat> right? That means he has a beginning, which means he does not possess co-eternality with the Father, which destroys the Trinity doctrine, right? But anyway, right? It says, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, ask of me. And I shall give thee the heathen, right? Oh, what's that word for heathen? Hmm. The goy, the goyim, the gawayim, right? Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen, right? For thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron and shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Let's go back to all right, the book of Revelation, chapter 2, and verse 25. Right, it says, 
But he that uh but that which he have already hold fast till I come, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, unto him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. He's quoting Psalms the second chapter, right? It says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Right? So guess what? We put our trust that Hamashiach Yahawashai's, all right, sacrifice for us, all right, way back on Calvary, right, covers our sins past, right? And that we now in newness of life serve him and follow him, right, as our Lord, right? But that does not make him our God in the sense of the deity in which we worship, right? And Paul would agree with me, right? Let's go to the book of First uh, Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 5. It says, for there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there are there be gods many and lords many. But to us, there is but one God. Who's that one God to us? The Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom we are, whom are all things, and we by him. So he's our Lord, right? He's a God in the sense that he's our, our ruler, right? The, the law does say in Deut uh, Exodus 22nd chapter, verse 28 or 20 and 22, I forget, right? That thou shalt not revile the gods nor curse the ruler of thy people. Jesus Christ is our ruler. He's our king. He's a, he's, he's a God, right? He is a God, but he's not the God in which we serve in regards to Latreia or divine worship and service, right? We give him proskuneo, but we don't give him Latreia, right? Nor does he ask for Latreia, right? We're going to bow our knee, right, when, when he comes, right? And that's proskuneo. But Latreia belongs only to the Father, right? But anyway, we can see this very clearly throughout the scriptures, right? That the kingdom belongs to the Israelites. Let's go back there in Micah 4 and let's finish it out. 4 and 8. It says, O thou tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, to thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of, the, of Jerusalem. Now why dost thou cry out uh, aloud? Is there no king in thee? Right? We're crying now, right? Because we don't have our king. But when our king comes, that's when we're going to receive dominion with him. Right? Is thy counselor perish? For pains have taken thee as a woman in travail. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of, uh, of Zion, like a woman in travail. Now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. There Yahweh shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Right? So the Most High God is going to redeem us. Of course, he's not going to get up off of his throne and go literally grab us. Right? He's going to send forth his arm. Who is his arm? His arm is his son, right? The king that he's going to set over us to redeem us, right? Who lets us know, or lets us know in the scripture that he will not meet thee as a man, right? So it says, now also many nations are gathered against thee that say, let her be defiled. Let our eyes look upon Zion, right? But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand they his counsel. For he shall gather them as the sheaves into the floor. Where is he gathering them? He's gathering them to Yahweh Shapat, to Jehoshaphat, the valley of decision, right? Just as he as a man would gather, all right, wheat to a threshing floor, right? It says, She's into the floor, arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion. Well, God's not going to do the literal threshing, right? He tells us in Ezekiel the 25th chapter, all right, that he's going to lay his vengeance upon. Edom by the hand of his people Israel, right? Jeremiah 51 and 20 says, Thou art my battle axes and weapons in war, and with thee will I break the nations, roughly paraphrasing, right? So God is going to use the Israelites, right? Of course, including his son, to do what? 
to do these things, right? Arise and thrust, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron and will make thy hooves brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord and their substance unto the Lord. Right? That's the kingdom. The kingdom, all right, literally is the Israelites ruling with Christ over the other nations. The, the, the kingdom shall not be left to other people according to the word of God, right? According to the word of God, the other nations are going to all serve Christ in the Israelites, right? According to the word of God, the Israelites are going to have to come, or the, the other nations are going to have to come to the Israelites to learn their ways. And that's what, is, what it means to be a light to the nations. Right? We can go all through our biblical prophecy and demonstrate this. Right, but what's not going to happen is a white boy, an Edomite, propping himself up right in the earth as a, a, a vanguard of this word of of the knowledge of the Bible that belongs to the Israelites and to the Israelites only. All right. And I will continue to harp on that because these these people need to know and they're going to know they're going to know. Right. When they are forced to bow down to the true Israelites. Right. When they are forced to serve the Israelites, they're going to know that we are the seed that the Lord have blessed. They're going to know that or right? we're going to be known amongst the Gentiles. Right. Right now, we're not because right now we're scattered. Right? Our king is not here. Right. We are in a uh, we are uh, a derision, right? We are for praying, none save deliver, right? None save restore, right? That's what that's our disposition right now, right? But what we're doing is we're coming back to the knowledge of self, right? We're coming back to our idea to the true understanding of the Bible, and understanding that we are the descendants of the nation of Israel, and that we are who God chose, and be and through His Holy Spirit we now have the ability, right? To understand this word, right? And the reason why we're able to understand this word is because we are now coming back and keeping his word and doing his word, right? And therefore, we now have an understanding to do so, right? Again, Daniel 2 and 10, 12 and 10 says that the wicked, many are going to be made pure and white, right? And none of the wicked are going to understand. This is why Frank, I mean, not Frank, that was Peter, right? The guy who was on previously, Frank Stallcup, right? And all these Edomites, all these heathen, all these non-Israelites, right? None of them are going to understand, but especially the, the so-called white man, the Edomites, because they are the border of wickedness according to the Bible, and the scriptures say that none of the wicked shall understand. All right? But with that, I give all praise, all glory, all honor unto the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh. I do so in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Right? I want to encourage everyone to please like, share, subscribe, to the channel if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button hit that bell icon so you can get notified when uh new videos drop all right if it's on your heart you can super chat leave a super thanks if you're watching on the playbacks if you want to go ahead and uh send via cash app that would be greatly appreciated as well all right just so you know google takes their percentage they take about 30 30 percent all right so if you if you're if you're watching any camp congregation any teacher right and you're donating to the uh, to, to brothers and to these congregations, just know that if you're super chatting or super thinking, right, Google's getting the cut of that, out of that, right? If you give a brother $10, he only seeing seven of that, right? But if you send it, send it through the cash app, that brother will see that whole thing in Google, right, who's ran by our enemies, right? They won't get a dime out of that. But again, I, I thank brothers and sisters. Again, give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, until next time, I pray you brothers and sisters were edified. Shalom.